Today we find that the international media, we look around us, Islam is on the firing line. If you pick up any international media, whether it be the television satellite channels, whether it be the newspapers, whether it be the magazines, you find that Islam is in the firing line. Even on the internet, there is virulent propaganda about Islam. So this is the hype of the media. It is the hype of the media. It is selectively targeting. So because of this, you find the scenario today that there is a misconception about Islam. And I blame the Muslims also. That we aren't actually conveying the message of truth to them. We aren't doing our job. And we find that certain verses of the Quran are called out of context. And one of the most famous verses of the Quran, in which the critics, they try and say that, Oh, Quran, say, wherever you find a non-Muslim, you kill him. And one of the famous critics of India, as you know, Arun Shuri, he wrote a book called The World of Fatwa. And he writes in his book and he quotes the Quran. In chapter number 9, verse number 5, he says, The Quran says, wherever you find a kafir, into bracket Hindu, into bracket Hindu, wherever you find a kafir, into bracket Hindu, you kill him. You wait for him in every stratagem of war. So imagine if a common Hindu, I know some Hindu reads this. Whoop. Quran says that wherever you find a Hindu, kill him, then immediately there will be a reaction. He will start going against Islam. So the problem is that selected few people for their own ulterior motives, because of their writing, then he wrote the book, The World of Fatwa, and he quotes the same verse which has been quoted by Orientalists. Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, verse number 5, giving reference. After verse number 5, he jumps to verse number 7 directly. Any intelligent person will know. Why? Because verse number 6 has the key, the reply to his allegation. In context, if you read Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, the first few verses speaks about a peace treaty between the Muslims and the Mushriks of Makkah. This peace treaty was unilaterally broken by the Mushriks of Makkah. So by the time Almighty God reaches verse number 5, he says that in the battlefield, that wherever you find your enemy, kafir means an unbeliever enemy, wherever you find the enemy, you kill him. In the battlefield, if anyone quotes out of context, it will sound absurd. Imagine a few decades earlier, there was a war between USA and Vietnam. And if the Army General of USA or the President of USA tells the American soldiers in the battlefield that my soldiers, don't get scared. Wherever you find the Vietnamese, kill him. It is to boost up the moral. But today, if someone quotes that the President of America said that wherever you find a Vietnamese, kill him, you will make him sound like a butcher. It's out of context. And but naturally, any Army General, to boost up the moral, he will give moral support to his soldiers. So similarly, when Almighty God says in the Quran to the believers that when the enemies come to kill you, don't get scared to kill them. So what's harm in it? And the next verse, verse number six says that if the unbelievers, if they seek asylum, it does not say let them go. It says if they seek asylum, if they seek peace, escort them to a place of security so that they may hear the word of Allah. The Quran does not say if the enemy wants peace, let them go. The Quran says, escort them to a place of security. Today, the most generous army general, the maximum military soldier, that if the enemy wants peace, let them go. Which army general will say that escort them to a place of security? But this is what Quran says. If you read in context, you come to know the real message of the Quran. And you pick up any religious scripture. I am a student of compiled religion. I have read the Ramayana, Mahabharat, Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, Sikh scriptures, Jain scriptures. I have read it. And you find that in certain occasion or the other, almost all the scriptures, some way or the other, they have mentioned fighting. They have mentioned killing. I can give quotations. If you read the Bible, in the book of Exodus, of the Old Testament, Chapter number 22, verse number 18 to 20, it says kill. Exodus, chapter number 32, says kill. Numbers, says kill. New Testament, if you read Luke, in the Gospel of Luke, it says kill. And if you remember the story of 
Jesus catch peace be upon him, when he goes to the garden of Gethsemane, he tells to one of the apostles to take a sword and stand there, and that apostle, he uses the sword to chop off the ear. So you find that fighting has been prescribed in almost all the scriptures. You read the Hindu scriptures. Mahabharat is a scripture. It is what? Bhagavad Gita chapter number 2. And you know that when Arjun, when he feels sad, that when he has to fight his relatives, Arjun says, how can I kill my relatives? There are thousands of people ahead in front of me. How can I kill them? So Lord Arjun, Arjun, he is given guidance by Lord Krishna. And Lord Krishna tells him that as far as for the truth, when you're on the truth, you don't have to see who's in front of you, whether the relatives or who it is. And that is correct. Truth prevails much more higher than the blood relations. Same thing the Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 135. Ya amunu, O you believe, stand out firmly for justice, as truth to Almighty God, even if it be against yourself, against your parents, against the rich or against the poor, Allah protects all. So if you study all the scriptures, all the scriptures somewhere or the other, sometime or the other, they have mentioned about fighting. That doesn't mean you pick up that verse of Exodus, you pick up that verse of Bhagavad Gita and say that, you know, Bhagavad Gita says that I have to kill your relatives. It's out of context. So here we have to analyze that to get a communal harmony, the best thing we have to do is we have to go back to our scriptures. If you go back to our scriptures, you'll come to know what is mentioned in the scriptures, which is the authentic source of every religion. And we find that the Quran says in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 32, that if anyone kills the ayah which was recited in the beginning of the talk by the Kari, Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 32, it says that if anyone kills any human being, whether it be Muslim or non-Muslim, unless it be for murder or for creating mischief in the land, it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. The Quran says if any human being, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, kills any other human being, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, unless it be for murder or for creating mischief in the land, it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. And the verse continues. And if anyone saved any human being, it is as though he has saved the whole nation. And as far as Kital, fighting the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Kital is concerned, there are certain guidelines laid down in the Quran and the saying of the beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa that even as a last resort, if you have to fight, if ever you have to fight the evil people, there are certain guidelines laid down. And Allah says in the Quran in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 190, that fight against those who fight you. But do not commit excesses, do not transgress the limits, for Allah does not like those who transgress limits. Allah says in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 194, that fight those who fight you until there is no more tumult and oppression. And there are several guidelines laid down in the Quran and the Hadith regarding if you have to fight as a last resort in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you fight, you should not harm the women, you should not harm the children, you should not harm the elderly people who are at their home, you should not break monasteries, you should not harm the religious people, you should not burn down trees, you should not uproot the trees, you should not burn the crops, you should not kill the animals. There's a big list of do's and don'ts. And according to a book written by Ramakrishna Rao, he writes on the life history of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he says that in all the fighting that took place at the time of the Prophet, all these years, 22 years, he gives a calculation from his own sources that 1,018 people were killed. How many? 1,018. Do you know the statistics of First World War? How many were killed? How many were killed? How many? 20 million people, 10 million soldiers and 10 million civilians. Second World War, 30 million people were killed. And another 34 million injured. Compare we find that if you go back to the source, you'll come to know the real reason and the real philosophy behind the statement of the verse of the Quran. The Quran from Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 81, which says, وَقُلْ جَالْ حَقْ وَزَاكَ الْبَاطِلِ إِنَّ الْبَاطِلَ كَانَ زَهُوكَ 
when truth is heard like in falsehood, falsehood perishes. For falsehood is by its nature bound to perish. It is the duty of every person who has the truth that he should convey that truth to those people who are not aware of it. 